Hey folks, Sam from TMVC, Greenline Tactical, and the Warrior Boat Society. Um, I've noticed a lot of confusion um, and a lot of questions about Generation 2 versus Generation 3. There's a lot of misinformation out there, so I want to put some facts out, um, maybe generate a discussion, um, and I know there'll be follow-on questions, so I'll do my best to answer any of those that come up. If I don't know the answer, I will certainly try and track down the answer from a qualified source. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go over Generation 2 and Generation 3 night vision. I'm not going to talk about Gen 0, Gen 1. That stuff is old, it's outdated, and it's obsolete. So, without further ado, Generation 2 versus Generation 3. Uh, I'll talk about Generation 2 first, and then go to 3. Uh, 2 is an older technology. Um, it uses multi-alkali photocathodes and microchannel plates. Um, Gen 3 uses gallium arsenide photocathodes and microchannel plates. Um, the, there, are, there are different uh, tiers, I would say, of Generation 2. There is Russian Gen 2, which it's, it's kind of runs the gap between really lousy and okay. Um, and then there is European Gen 2 uh, from a company, companies like Photonis or whatever and that they also have kind of a, a spectrum of, you know, lousy all the way up to um, pretty, pretty good. Um, and the best Gen 2 can keep pace um, and in certain areas outperform your uh, thin filmed uh, like Omni 8 Gen 3 stuff. Um, know that the best Gen 2 tubes are reserved for foreign special operations units, um, you know, overseas. So. Uh, Americans aren't necessarily going to get access to the best Photonis has to offer. So just like you're not going to have access to the best unfilmed Gen 3 that you know L3 has to offer. Um, Gen 2 is a little bit more robust uh, in terms of um, being able to absorb shock and recoil and stuff like that. So. Um, there is there is that which is you know can be a big deal. Um, Gen three is is uh, well. Let's see here. Again, if you know the specifications, you're buying to a spec uh, rather than a technology. So based on um, signal to noise ratio, uh, you can usually determine the performance of the two, both Gen two and Gen three. Um, you know, signal to noise ratio times line pair resolution gives you your uh, figure of merit or FOM. That's a quick, down and dirty way to determine if it's a good tube or not necessarily a good tube. Uh, there are exceptions to that rule. You can have high um, photocathode sensitivity, low halo values, and um, low EBIs and good luminance gain, and have you know average FOM and still have a very very good tube. So. FOM is not the end-all be-all, but it is a quick down and dirty way to determine if it's a decent uh, performing tube. Um, the, as far as, now I'll go to Gen 3. Uh, Gen 3 uses, the, like I said, the gallium arsenide photocathode. Um, and basically, uh, the, it theoretically gives Gen 3 a big technological advantage over Gen 2 as no electrons are lost in the conduction band. Um, electrons are important because um, as you convert your photons coming in uh, to electrons, and then those electrons are multiplied uh, and then converted back to photons, that's a big deal. Um, fewer electrons means fewer electrons multiplied, which means a, uh, a dimmer image uh, and or lower performance in low light levels. So there's that. Um, ITT Harris, uh, a lot of their, their uh, microchannel plates have like 10.6 million holes in the microchannel plates. Um, previously to uh, the, the Pinnacle technology, uh, Gen 3 had like 3.5 million holes. So that's a big deal. That's a big leap um, in technology. Um, when we came out with the um, Harris Pinnacle technology, the thin film technology, um, by, by reducing that film on the microchannel plate, um, you're able to still have the same um, 
resistance to light damage, but you had such uh, a, a much less electron loss, which translated to a brighter image. So you're able to get um, very, very good performance. Um, Omni 7, the Omnibus 7 contract was ITT. So if you are buying um, night vision, I would, I would re I'd recommend um, buying Omni 7 or better, Omni 7 or Omni 8. Um, you know you're going to get a, um, a decent performing tube. Um, the, I'm going to talk about Gen 4 for just a second. Um, there is no such thing as Gen 4 on the streets. However, years ago the military did request um, and put forth some contractual requirements for the next generation of night vision, which obviously Gen 4. Um, Gen 4 never came to fruition because all those contractual requirements were not able to be met. Um, however, L3, through the research and development process and millions of your taxpayer dollars, um, were, were able to implement kind of lessons learned in their Gen 3 technology. So now we have unfilmed uh, intensifier tubes. Unfilmed systems are all the rage right now. When you hear people talk about white phosphor, generally they're talking about unfilmed systems. Now, uh, and that's important because a lot of people key in on that white phosphor. They need to key in on the, the, the filmed versus unfilmed systems. Um, just because it's white phosphor doesn't mean it's better. You have Russian Gen 2 white phosphor, you have Photonis uh, white phosphor, you have thin film white phosphor from ITT, and um, you have unfilmed white phosphor from uh, L3. Really, if you're going to go um, white, or if you want the best, you're going to need to get that uh, unfilmed system. Uh, it is pricey, but uh, I have I've seen unfilmed systems outperform thin film systems conservatively 10 to 15 percent better. Uh, that said, I've seen unfilmed systems m exceed a 50 percent performance capability gain um, when compared to thin film systems. So it runs the gamut of um, better to amazingly better over thin film systems. And that, that uh, it's going to be a noticeable capability gain the lower the light levels get. You'll, you'll see better, brighter, crisper images without as much use at, with uh, supplemental IR, so a laser or, or an LED or something like that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't need um, an illuminator. I always recommend having an illuminator because night vision, whatever generation we're talking, operates on the premise of amplifying light. If there is no light, you can't make something from nothing. So you're going to still need an, an illuminator. You're just probably going to need it less with an unfilmed system. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is tube life. Generation 2, um, you're going to get about 5,000 hours uh, of, uh, which is 5,000 hours MTTF, which is mean time to failure. That doesn't mean at 5,000 5, hours it's going to burn out and die like a light bulb. That means at 5,000 hours <clears throat> it may not operate at 100% peak performance gain and over time it will start to um, degrade and drop off. Uh, you may get 6,000 hours of usable life out of the tube. You may get 7,500 hours of usable life out of the tube but you're not going to get as much as a Gen 3 system. Gen 3 systems get double that at 10,000 hours mean time to failure. And again, that doesn't mean you're going to get 10,000 hours and it's going to burn out. That means at 10,000 hours, the tube may or may not um, continue to work at peak efficiency. Uh, in all actuality, we're hearing reports of guys getting anywhere from 14 to 20,000 hours um, of usable tube life out of a Gen 3 system. Um, and why is that important? Because some of these high performance, I don't mean to, they're, they're, they're high performance. These high performance Gen 2 systems, um, they cost the same or more as a Gen 3 system. So you're paying the same or more to get a, a tube life of half of what a Gen 3 system is. So, you know, if it, it all things being equal, you're, you're paying more for less in, in, in certain instances. So, so know that going into um, the uh, tube purchasing process. Um, 
And the other thing I want to say is if Gen 2 systems, and this is opinion, so take that for what it's worth, if Gen 2 systems were all the rage, uh, the U.S. military would be buying it, you know, hand over fist. Um, we're not, and um, the European company, or the European, our European allies um, are buying it, but in all actuality, they want Gen 3 unfilmed systems. The top tier level foreign militaries, uh, like the British SAS, um, they have unfilmed Generation 3 systems. Um, and they're not going to use Gen 2 systems if they don't have to. So take that for what it's worth. Um, we have a lot of advantages being U.S. citizens here. Uh, I love this country because we have access to some really cool technology. Um, night vision is, is, is awesome. You know, it's a freaking superpower. Um, I recommend saving up and getting some, even if it's a, you know, a beat up Generation 3 PBS 14, it's probably going to suit you and serve you uh, quite well. Uh, always buy the best thing you can afford. So if that means saving up an extra month or two to, to jump from a Gen 2 to a Gen 3 system, I recommend doing it. Um, it's going to be better for your resale value if you sell it, um, and it's going to probably perform better than Gen 2 stuff uh, overall. And it's probably going to be actually a, a used Gen 3 system. Um, it's probably going to be more affordable than some high-spec um, Photonis system. And it's not going to necessarily lag behind all that much, if at all. Plus, we're making America great again. Buy American products. Support American you know, manufacturing. But um, hopefully that clears up any confusion or the fog that is this uh, technical realm of night vision. Um, again, post up any questions you have. Call me at TNVC. Um, I'll be glad to spend time on the phone answering any uh, follow-up questions you guys have. Uh, we, we talk about all this stuff at uh, Greenline Tactical, night vision classes, night fighter classes, and we think we do a pretty good job of educating people um, about what to buy and what to avoid. Um, you know, spending a few hundred bucks on a training class could, actually, I don't say could, it will save you thousands of dollars in the long run. We've seen it time and time again. Guys will come to the class and go, oh my God, I almost bought, you know, fill in the blank. I'm glad I didn't because that would have been a waste of my money. So, um, we talk about all this stuff at Green Line classes. Um, and again, if, if you're at a trade show, come by the booth. We'll talk your ear off. Um, or call me on the phone. Anyway, have a good day. Um, I'd also like to mention at the time of this filming, L3 and Harris um, have merged, or Harris bought L3, so we'll see how that shakes out uh, as far as uh, tube technology goes, uh, pricing, uh, availability, and all that stuff. So um, that's the only other thing that I'll throw in there. Have a good one. Bye.